so this habit forming is is based largely on a, a workshop I did recently with uh, something called CIFA, the Centre for Applied Rationality. So it's about using a an understanding of how our brain works to achieve our goals and to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool. So, um, think about habits that you've tried to form. Uh, think about you know, whether it's New Year's resolutions or just some change you want to make and how well you've done in the past. And if you like, most of us, we've had a lot more intentions than we've had successes. So, if you think about a habit that you're wanting to form now, whether it's going to the gym, exercising, eating healthy, um, sleeping before 12, whatever it is. Uh, imagine yourself going forward in time, maybe a month or three months' time, and saying, well, how well have I done on that? And if you find that you haven't done well, are you surprised? And a lot of the time we're, we're not surprised. So the idea here is to say, what can we do now to change our preparedness in, in setting up a habit so that when we go forward, when we, we look ahead, we think, well, actually, I'd be pretty surprised if that fell through. And one key aspect of this is that there's a, we've got a habit as kind of rational creatures. I say kind of, but we, we have this modern, evolved part of the brain where we, we can think and plan, and it's, it's given us a fantastic advantage in evolution. Uh, but then we, we have a, an idea that we're not going to eat a bucket of ice cream every night anymore. And then we see the ice cream and the rationality sort of goes out the window. So having an understanding of how our, our brain works is going to help. And thinking about how you would train a different kind of animal. So if you're training a, a puppy or a seal or a dolphin or something... We know how to train animals, and it, it tends to involve a very positive approach, positive reinforcement, and repetition, a lot of repetition. And if you think about it, we are we're the most intelligent animals. And even if you take away that modern the prefrontal contact, cortex and all of that, uh, we've still got a very big brain underneath. The, the major part of our brain is this more ancient mammalian brain, reptilian brain under that. So how, how do you work with that? This is what uh, Daniel Kahneman calls uh, system one. It's that part of the brain that's, that operates much more on feelings and intuition and oh, it's where feelings and intuition come from. So how do you train that? The, the way you do it is through, uh, well, through repetition, but also understanding how to talk to that part of the brain. Uh, like it's, rather than just telling yourself, I will do this, actually kind of visualizing yourself doing it, making it as vivid as possible, uh, and creating a story around it. The, the, like our brains are fantastic storytellers. Uh, whether the story is true or not, we, we interpret events, we create stories around it, and we remember stories. So if we can bring that in to support our, our new habit, that's a, a fantastic tool as well. So to get a bit more concrete, uh, uh, three things I'd, I'd want to focus on. Uh, one is if you, if you want to have a, a new habit, there's a specific action you want to take on a regular basis. The first thing is you want to be really clear on that. So uh, having a, a clear goal is key. And, and this could be a whole talk in its own right, but the idea is that you think through, well, what is it that I'm getting out of this new habit? And is there another way I can get it? Really think through, question it, and make sure it's what you want. And 
maybe you'll come up with a better idea, a different way of getting there. And if you don't, then at least you'll be clearer on the fact that this is, this is what you want to do. Uh, there's a lot more to be said, but I, I want to focus on the, the actual habit training. The next thing is that if you think about how you know, a dolphin is trained or a, a, a dog, there's a, there's a trigger. There's a particular thing you do, the animal responds. And you find that we actually will do the same thing as well, that there's just a, we have an automated response to a lot of things. And if you realize that, you realize that we can actually create that response. Um, so think about, uh, for example, you, you want to uh, pull out your to-do list when you get home. Uh, so that's the time when, rather than coming home and sort of collapsing and not really knowing what I'm doing, I want to be reminded of the fact that I pull out my to-do list. So uh, there's a few things you can do. You can sort of um, create a story, create a vivid picture that you come home and uh, I've seen someone else talk about how they, they did this, imagining the door is this giant phone because the, the phone is where they keep their to-do list. They come home and they sort of they sort of imagine the feeling of shock of seeing this. They're like, "Wow, this amazing phone!" And it, so as they come up, it, it actually gives birth to a little phone. And suddenly, they've got their phone in their hand, and it's like, "Oh, and it's got the to-do list." And they sort of visualise it as this strange picture, but it's this kind of story that that engages us. But then the next thing is to actually go out and think how you would train someone else—a you know, toddler, a Labrador, a dolphin—repeat. And actually go out and uh, think about effectiveness here rather than saying, oh, that's kind of silly. Um, think about effectiveness. Just, just repeat it. Do it as um, realistically as possible. Do it like 10 times. Go out of the house. Come in. Run through the scenario in, in your head as you, as you open the door to receive the phone and, to, and put yourself in that state of mind where you're ready to act. Or... It might be, I, I did something similar for myself, but it's coming home and as I open the door, I, it prompts me to ask myself, ah, you, you know, is now the time for work, is now the time for a to-do list, uh, is now the time for exercise. And by actually going out and repeating that a few times, I've, I've made it so that when I come to that situation, there's, there's this prompt in the environment and it's not this habit, I've got to try and remember to do this thing. It's you know, when I come to that place and see that thing, I'm in that situation, my, my brain brings it up as this remembered, remembered thing that's, that's happened before. So the trigger. If you want to have a clear trigger. Uh, and make this as specific as possible. When I come home is not specific. Is it, like, you know, is it when you get to the front gate? Is it when you pull the car in? Is it when you get into the living room? No, it needs to be a, a very specific moment in time, like when you put your hand on the, the door handle, when you tap something, when you, or, or it might be the front gate, whatever it is for you. Um, or it might be when you see a very specific thing. And for me, uh, one, one issue I have is with sort of falling asleep and uh, being too tired to get up and, or just kind of not having the energy, motivation to get up and, and get into bed properly. So there's a few things I'm doing there, but the, as a backup plan, I created a trigger and ran through it several times that when I see myself in this common situation, you know, I'm sort of lying face down, I'm feeling a certain way, feeling tired, that I recognise that and go, ah, jump up and switch out the light, do what I have to do, get into bed properly. Uh, and so I, I did that, actually practice doing it, practice sort of imagine bringing up that feeling, did it like 10 times, jumping up, and sort of <coughs> letting it pass, go, get back into bed, repeat it. And so the next time it happened, the normal thing of, oh, I should, you know, the, the foggy thinking was there as usual but 
the, the thing that came through was that I was in this situation, I recognised it, and there's like a program running that goes, I recognise this, I know what I've got to do, jump up, turn out the light, get back into bed. And it's, it's this repetition actually enforces it, makes it, makes your brain bring it up when you need to bring it up. Um, clear trigger and yeah, and train. So that was, that was the other thing, just going over, over it repeatedly. Uh, Next thing I would say is that this works not just for, for habits that you want to take on, but also think about similar things with habits that you want to get rid of. Think about what your trigger is. Think about what, what the habit is that you're doing now and replace it with something. So if your habit is late at night, you're feeling kind of, you're feeling tired, resistance is lower, you reach for chocolate. And if you just, so, Think about the goal. So your goal at that point is to feel better by eating chocolate. Question that goal, is there another way to do it? And it might be eat an apple instead or have a glass of water or whatever it is. And practice actually kind of putting yourself in that frame of mind, being in the exact same situation of doing it, going through the action, noticing and then changing to the apple or the whatever it is. Um, so, any questions? Well, thank you very much. Cool.